All right, let's go ahead and get started here. So what we're going to be going over in this video is a few examples of a teak paragraph. And the purpose of this is to make sure that we know what each part of the teak paragraph means and where they go in the paragraph. And eventually you'll be using this information to help you write your body paragraphs of your research paper. So let's go ahead and get started by reading the directions. It says, read through each paragraph. We're going to do example number one together, and then I'm going to have you do example number two on your own. Circle and label each part of the paragraph, including the topic sentence, the evidence, the analysis, and the conclusion. Once you have identified and labeled each part of the paragraph, answer the questions below each example. So let's go ahead and get started with the first part of that, which is circling and labeling. So let's start off with our topic sentence. We know, or we should know, if you have your TEEK paragraph notes from um, last, uh, we took them over our TEEK paragraph um, kind of lecture uh, PowerPoint. Um, the, te the topic sentence is always the first sentence of our paragraph. So you can guarantee that the first sentence is always your topic sentence. So we're going to highlight that. And then, it, in the acronym TEEK, T-E-A-C, the E is the evidence, and it comes right after the topic sentence. So we know our evidence has to start here. It has to start immediately after our topic sentence. But then we need to decide where our evidence ends. So if you remember what evidence is, evidence is a quote or, um, or a paraphrase. It's information that you took from a, from a source that is not your own. So we did this on research tables, and there should be, for most of you, quotations. You took word for word from a source. So in our paragraph, evidence should always be put in quotation marks. And if we start to look here, we can see that we have a quotation mark right here, and then if we follow it and follow it and follow it, we also have a quotation mark here. So that tells us that that is the end of our evidence. One thing we have yet to talk about is this guy right here in parentheses, the in-text citation. That is also part of our evidence, the E in TEEK, because it is giving credit to the authors of this paragraph. So your evidence goes all the way from after your topic sentence to your in-text citation. And if you haven't done one of those uh, to in-text citation yet, then it just goes to the end of your quotation mark. So I'm going to highlight that one in, let's do red. Okay, so our evidence is in red. Then let's go ahead and go on to our analysis is what it's asking for next. Analysis comes right after evidence, the E and the A. So I'm going to go down here and we know it starts here. And this is where it kind of starts to get a little bit tricky. We know that the evidence ends right before the concluding sentence. Because if you remember a concluding sentence, the conclusion, a conclusion is always the last sentence of a paragraph, of the TEEK paragraph. So if you want to skip analysis and go ahead and write and do the conclusion, I would do that. So we know that this last sentence has to be our conclusion, which means everything in between the evidence and the conclusion is our analysis. So then I'm going to label that one. Let's do a bright green. So we have our topic sentence in purple, our evidence, which we got from a source, in red, and then the green is our analysis, which is our own words, it's our explanation of the evidence, and then in, our, in blue here we have our concluding sentence to wrap up the paragraph. So let's get started on these questions. Number one, what is the topic and the claim of the paragraph? Well, these can always be found in the topic sentence. So it's asking for the topic. Let's start with that. If you're looking at a topic sentence, the topic should always be near the beginning. So for this example, the topic would be reading in class. That's overall what they're trying to talk to us about throughout the entire paragraph. They should be talking about reading in class. Next comes the claim, and this is what they're trying to prove to us. What are they trying to convince us of? And if you look up here, we have reading class as our topic, and then it says it is an, is an effective practice. 
And so that is what they're trying to prove. That is their claim, that it is an effective practice. So I'm going to write claim equals an effective, I'm going to put its, referring to the reading class, an effective practice. So the last part of this, and it's not in the question, is a because statement. In all of our topic sentences, so for each of your body paragraphs, you need to have a because. And that because introduces your first reason or your reason for that paragraph for someone to believe what you're trying to prove. So looking at this topic sentence, it says reading in class is an effective practice because it helps low level readers. So looking at that, reading class is our topic, effective practice is our claim, and it's going to give us information about how it helps low-level readers. So we know from this topic sentence exactly what they are going to prove to us in this paragraph. So let's go on to number two. Where did they get the evidence from and how do they introduce the evidence? Let's focus on the first one. Where did they get the evidence from? Well, the easiest way to look is at the in-text citation. They got theirs from authors named Chow and Chow. So uh, we can look at, I'm trying to make this so it's not bold. There we go. The authors are Chow and Chow. That's where they got the information from. Now the second part is something we haven't practiced yet, which is how do they introduce the evidence? Because if you notice, it doesn't start with the actual quotation from the source. What they've done here is they have told us where the information came from. So this one says, in a research evaluation by Chow and Chow, and then it starts the quotation. So this is telling us that <clears throat> they, they got this from a research evaluation. Maybe on the article that they went to, it mentioned that this was a research, research evaluation, and so they decided that it is important that we know that information before we get to the actual um, evidence here. So you might have to, in your own paragraphs, go back to your source where you got your quote from and decide is this an article and if so maybe you can introduce it by saying in an article from so such and such news source and then do your quote or in a research study or in a survey um, then you can start your actual evidence so <clears throat> excuse me how do they introduce the evidence they say it is from a research evaluation. Awesome, so that's number two. Number three, this is the tough one. Well, not the first part, but the second part. How many sentences is the analysis? So we're looking at our green here. One, two, three. It is three sentences. I'm gonna go put three sentences right here. And you may be wondering why I would ever ask you to find that. And the reason I'm asking you to do that is so you can see the average amount of sentences for an analysis, how much we use our own words to explain the evidence. And so by labeling it like this, you can kind of look and see, oh, that looks to be about 50-50. There looks to be about as much evidence as there is explanation, which is pretty good. And in the next example, you'll also see another ratio. So I'm asking you to look for how many sentences there are so that you can kind of get an average of what maybe you should be putting in your paragraphs. So then let's go on to the next question. Does it explain the evidence and say how it supports their claim? So remember, analysis is supposed to be, do two things. Well, the most important thing to remember is analysis is your own words. You are clarifying the evidence. You're telling us what it means. And that's the first part that I have written right here. Explain the evidence. So we have to go back and decide, does this explain the evidence, which is up here? And then number two, we have to decide, does it connect to our topic and our because statement? So all of this green information, all of these words in green, they should be focused on explaining this information as well as helping prove the because statement. And in this case, it's the low-level readers. So I'm going to read through the evidence and the analysis really quick, and then I'm going to point out some similar um, phrases and words between the two that I'll let you know, and you can decide for yourself if 
the evidence, if the analysis is doing its job. So here we go with the red. In a research evaluation by Chow and Chow, ninth grade students were allowed 10 minutes each day to silent read, and it improved their reading skills by the end of the year. Children can get bored with reading if it has no meaning to them, i.e., when reading in cl as a class, not everyone is on the same level, and therefore the lower level readers are not as interested. Then here's our analysis of that. So that was a quote, and now we're going to our own words. That's in green. Once a child discovers the wonders of reading, they are sure to come across words they don't know. When this happens, silent reading will help them because they can go over words they do know and learn as they go. This really helps since classwork reading may be harder for lower level readers and they have many words they don't understand, as opposed to learning a couple new words a day. So, I'm looking for similar phrases between the two and you should be doing that in your own evidence and analysis. I would focus on taking it bit by bit. Start with the beginning. So the beginning of our evidence talks about how they were allowed 10 minutes each day to silent read and it improved their reading skills. So let's go down to our analysis. In our own words, do we talk about that reading 10 minutes each day and improving its skills? Hmm, I'm seeing something about how they come across words they don't know. Oh, here's the word silent reading. And this one says silent reading will help them because they can go over the words they do know. So it does mention silent reading, and this mentions silent reading, and this one mentions improved reading skills by the end of the year. And this one just says they can go over words they do know. So they mentioned the silent reading, but they really did not stay on topic. They probably should have mentioned something about the 10 minutes each day. Another way to maybe have worded this would be, Silent reading, even for a little bit each day, can help students go over words they do know. So that way you're kind of going over the 10 minutes, but you're saying it in a different way. So, okay, they're kind of getting off topic here. Then let's talk, look, take a look at our second part of evidence. Children can get bored with reading if it has no meaning. When reading in class, they're not at the same level, so they're not as interested. If I'm looking at the rest of this analysis, it does mention how classwork is harder for lower level readers and it does talk about lower level readers here as not being interested and no meaning to them so I can kind of make those connections but I would have to say overall in the green whoever wrote this they got a little off topic they should have focused a little bit more on all of this data about reading as a class and interesting lower level readers as opposed to just talking about words they don't know. So they got a little off topic. And then finally, does it do the second part? Does it, exp does it connect to the because statement? Our because statement is it helps lower level readers. Did they do that here? Let's see. It really, it does talk about it. It says silent reading will help them go over words they don't know. It may be harder for them and they can learn more, a couple new words a day. So I would say they definitely did a good job connecting it to this because statement, but they did not connect it well to their evidence. So we can say they, oops, excuse me. They kind of did their job. They connected it to the because, but not the evidence. So remember, we're always trying to explain the evidence in our analysis and connect it to this. And finally, I only have a couple seconds left. Compare the topic sentence and conclusion. We need to talk about this concluding sentence. How are they similar and how are they different? So this is our concluding sentence. This is solid proof that having time to read in class is a benefit to everyone. And so if you can tell, they revisit this reading in class and then they say how it, it does help. And so they kind of reworded it a little bit, but it's almost the same, which is what yours can be too. So your concluding sentence is only one sentence. And then just for time's sake, rate the paragraph's effectiveness when you're done. And so you're going to do that with example number two next. So go through the process, highlight this, the sections, 
and then answer all the questions. Let me know if you have any questions at all.